modern web design is no longer limited to computer monitors. More people are enjoying the freedom of browsing on the web on a variety of mobile devices. As a web designer, you have to consider how your design will look on no less than three different screen sizes. Now, this concept is known as responsive design, and to be an effective web designer, you had better get familiar with the idea of designing for multiple screens. There are different views on what makes good responsive design, but the concept is the same. Delivering an attractive and consistent user experience across multiple screen sizes and device types. So what exactly does that mean for you as a web designer? First, you have to put away the notion of a one-size-fits-all design approach. Instead, you should focus on the screen dimensions or viewports of smartphones, tablets, and of course computer monitors. What will look perfectly fine on a computer monitor may not be so easily read on a smartphone or tablet. You will have to make compromises or simply create multiple versions of your layout to accommodate these varied screen sizes. In a similar effort, you should consider the touch interface of mobile devices. Instead of a mouse, the user navigates with their thumb or finger, a considerably less accurate device. Now, your designs must be sized to make navigating and otherwise interacting with your website easy for mobile users. There's nothing more frustrating for a smartphone user than trying to navigate a website designed for a computer screen. A quick internet search will reveal recommended touch target sizes for the more popular mobile devices on the market. Now, one final thought about designing for multiple screens is the concept of device orientation. While this generally does not constitute additional layouts, it might be worth investigating the look of your design in both portrait and landscape modes of mobile devices. To help you design for multiple screens, I recommend using an artboard approach in Adobe Illustrator. Now let's take a brief look at this feature with a sample file that I've already set up for you. Here we are in the Adobe Illustrator interface and we're viewing just one of the three artboards that's in this particular document. Now I have this artboard set to what is currently the most popular viewport size of 1366 by 768. Now just so we're all on the same page here, let me clarify that the white box itself represents my artboard. The gray area outside of that is a pasteboard area. Now, let's take a look at some of the other artboards that I have in this particular document. So to the right of the screen here, you will see my artboards panel. And what I'll do is I'll go over here and I'm going to double click on the second artboard. When I do, Illustrator will display that second artboard. And we can see this is the iPad Retina, and there are the pixel dimensions there for you. And this one is in a portrait orientation rather than landscape like the previous. I also have one more. This is the high-resolution Android display of 1080 by 1920, and it too is in the portrait orientation. Now, as we're viewing these individual artboards, I have given myself a lot of extra space around them so that we're not seeing multiple artboards on the same screen uh, at the same time. And I do this because it helps me to focus on the design for this particular device. Now, let's take a look at all of the artboards at once. That's simply a matter of zooming out far enough. So if you go to the view menu, you're gonna see a command in there that says, fit all in window. And there's a keyboard shortcut there listed beside it. If you're on a Mac, your keyboard shortcut will be a little bit different. So in my case, it's alt control zero because I'm on a PC. If you're on a Mac, that's gonna be the command option zero. So I'm gonna select this and now we can see all three artboards. You can see the huge amount of space between them. So let's say we wanna add a fourth viewport here, another artboard, if you will. All I'm going to do is go over to the left into my tools panel and down towards the bottom on the left hand side, I will find the artboard tool. I'm going to select that and then my screen is going to change a little bit. It's going to go a little bit lighter gray now and then my first artboard has all these little control handles on it. So it is targeted right now. And I'm going to go up to the very top and in the 
control panel. That's this bar across the very top of my screen. There are a few icons here to the left-hand side. And the first one just shows me that I'm in a portrait mode or landscape mode. And then right beside that is the new artboard command. So I'm going to click on that icon to create a new artboard. But we don't see a new artboard, do we? No. We don't. And the reason being is that it has preloaded this artboard into my cursor. So I just have to move the cursor out over my document area, and then it allows me to place this artboard wherever I want. So I've got a little extra space over here. I'm just going to click and place that artboard. Now that artboard is exactly the same size as the last artboard uh, that I had selected. In this case, it's the Android 1080 size. And so if I go up here back to the control panel and I click on this presets menu, you can see there are a variety of presets that I can choose from. And so I'm just going to scroll down here. I can choose from individual devices or I can choose from just common screen resolutions here. And so I think I want to create one for the new Apple Watch here. So I'm just going to click on this and you can see that my artboard size has immediately changed to those pixel dimensions. Now, if you're curious as to what those dimensions are, go right back up here to the top into this control panel and follow the information out here to the right. You're going to see an X, a Y coordinate, that gives you positioning, and then the width and the height. So the new Apple Watch is 312 pixels by 390 pixels. Now, if you're not designing for a particular device in mind, but you do have the pixel dimensions in mind, you can do something very similar. I can go up here to the top, click on the new artboard icon, place my new artboard, and then go back up here to the control panel, out here to the width and height. And let's just say I want to do something that is 1,280 pixels wide and 720 pixels tall. There is my new custom artboard. You can move the artboards by just simply clicking inside of them and dragging. So you could put them really close together if you'd like. My preferred choice is to space them out a good bit. That way, when I'm viewing the individual artboards, I'm not being distracted by some of the other artboards that are around it. Using Illustrator's artboard feature is an amazing way to ensure consistency of my design across multiple devices and viewports. Web-capable devices are pouring out of factories at an amazing pace. Demands for more features or larger screens have only added to the number of varied screen sizes. Now, as a designer, it's important to note that you will be designing for more than just one screen. Understanding what makes a beautiful and user-friendly web design is not enough. You must be able to recreate that experience across multiple screen sizes and device types.